David Tinsley's chief UK economist at BNP Paribas joins me in the studio. Lovely to have you with us. And so we, those growth figures came in a little bit worse mm. than expected, didn't they, at 0.3% instead of 0.2%. Was this expected? Well, I don't think it wasn't expected. We didn't expect it, and I don't think most of the analysts in the market expected it. But I wouldn't put it as a really big deal. It's really a rounding error in terms of the third release. I don't suppose uh, the source of the revision is particularly significant. And the overall prospects for growth this year, not much better, are they? I mean, the, the budget basically confirmed what we already knew from the OBR, 0.8% instead of 0.7%. Yeah, 0.8%. We're looking for 1%. But, uh, I mean, the headwinds to growth this year should be abate somewhat compared to 2011. But, yes, the growth performance this year is going to be pretty limp again, really. So what needs to happen then to turn that around? Is there anything the government or indeed the Bank of England can do to change that outlook? Well, I don't think there's a lot domestically we can do. I mean, the bank has to keep loose monetary policy in place. The government really has to keep on its fiscal austerity path. Really, it's about overseas, what goes on in the Eurozone, and to some extent, what goes on in the States as well. So what did you make of comments then by Bank of England policymaker David Miles' recent comments? He's saying that spare capacity is going to weigh on inflation. So in other words, inflationary pressures will remain low. Do you agree? Well, in the big picture, I do. I mean, in the big picture, 1% growth rates are miles away from the sorts of growth rates that would generate a lot of inflationary pressure, really, in the UK. Is there a willingness, then, on the part of the Bank of England to do a little bit more, even though they already own a lot of guilt? Mm. Well, I think that's fairly... That decision is really quite finely poised. I mean, there's certainly a camp that would do more. Uh, we expect them, the MPC to remain on hold, at least in May, mm. but clearly it is a, a fine decision. And what about those concerns you're saying that the main threat to UK growth is coming from outside of the country? Mm. How, if we would see a deterioration in the Eurozone, how would that hurt market sentiment? Actually, would it keep guilt yields low? It probably would, yes. I mean, you saw a very sharp fall in business investment in Q4. So what it will show, really, I think, is how it will impact on activities in confidence, on investment and in terms of exports. Uh, and it will, keep, uh, it will keep the lid on uh, guilt yields, for sure. Can anything be done to get businesses and, and companies to spend and invest more? I mean, we had a reduction mm. of the corporation tax, didn't we, in the budget to 24%. Yeah. Is that likely to make, yeah. make much difference in the coming year? Well, those sorts of things help. They probably help a lot in the medium term, but clearly sentiment drives investment planning to a large extent, and all the time the Eurozone problems loom large over the UK, I think businesses will feel uh, pretty prudent in terms of their planning. What do you make of comments from Ben Broadbent, external MPC member? He recently said that the problems with the banks in the UK were mainly down to expansion in overseas lending. Do you see it that way? Well, I think that there's, there's broadly an argument there that a lot of the growth in the balance sheet of UK banks was overseas, and that's the bit that really turned sour. But nonetheless, uh, look at the UK property market over the last sort of 10 years to, to 2007. Mm. Prices were very toppy, transactions were very high. So I think you could make the argument too that uh, domestically the banks were getting a bit ahead of themselves as well. So should the Bank of England be doing what the ECB is doing and offering cheap loans to the banks? Should they be engaging in those sorts of measures mm. instead of QE? Mm. Well, I don't think uh, there's a straight choice there, really. Uh, QE and uh, the LTRO that the ECB are doing are not too dissimilar, really, at the end of the day. So I think the bank is probably wise to keep with its current course of uh, buying gilts uh, in terms of stimulating the UK economy. Where is, where is growth going to come from hmm. in the coming year? What needs to be done hmm. to stimulate the economy hmm. and put the recovery on a firmer footing? Hmm. Well, I see a little bit of growth in the second half of this year coming from the consumer. We did get okay. some consumption growth in Q4 in the figures just released. Uh, inflation's going to come down in the UK, uh, the oil price notwithstanding. And so we are going to probably see some consumption growth. But clearly we're looking at... Where is it? Why would we see consumption growth if, if, you know, we're in a situation where fuel costs have been rising and wage growth is pretty much non-existent? Mm. Well, I think wage growth is around about 2%. Inflation is falling to around about 2% over the course of this year. And consumers have really been pretty beaten down over the course of the last few years. So there probably is a pent little, little pent-up demand, a little bit of room for consumption growth in the second half of this year. Really good to get your thoughts, your reaction, those latest uh, growth figures and indeed the outlook in general. David Tinsley, Chief UK Economist at BNP Paribas. Thank, Thank you for your analysis.